Good morning. Hope you're doing well. I'm recording this sermon inside today because, as it has been for most of the week, it's very cold and wet outside. I hope you're managing to stay warm despite the cold weather. Uh, and if at all possible, it'd be really great if uh, you could take part in our uh, our project, our activity to mark St Peter's Day to celebrate our life together as a community and just forward to me a voice note or a video or a text message. It doesn't have to be long, doesn't have to be anything elaborate or special, just something from you to the rest of the congregation. It could be a bit of news, it could be a verse or a prayer, it could be anything. Um, just just to keep the connection between us all going as we're in this enforced state of lockdown and physically separated from one another at this time. Imagine for a moment that someone who was in your class at school ended up playing for the Springbok at rugby. Or if you're not South African, take that and apply it to the sport that is biggest in your country. Of course, uh, there'd be an element of celebration about that. Maybe if it's not something that's normal for your school, there would be your school would celebrate it and talk about it and post on social media about it. And there may even be interviews with the person's teacher and that sort of thing. So you would have a bit of pride and a bit of excitement about that, I'm sure. But for some of us, there may be also the kind of reaction that says, I remember him when he forgot his books that day and lied to the teacher about it or I remember him when he was rude to the teacher or forgot his lunch or was a bit of a bully or or whatever it was you know we think ah, I know the real person behind the celebrity image and that kind of attitude of course is the attitude that leads us to kind of embrace and and feed on gossip about celebrities or or indeed other people particularly ones who are doing well we think we know the real person but we're all prone to this i am you are we all are it's some it's a very very human and normal reaction something in us is tempted to negativity and cynicism particularly when someone we know gets recognized or praised or gets acclaim there was a song by a, a British singer years ago that that named this very clearly in the title of the song. And the title of the song was, We Hate It When Our Friends Become Successful. It's quite a human and normal reaction. And it's not one that we're often proud of, I want to admit, but, but it's true. And that's what we're dealing with in this passage that we're looking at today from Mark chapter 6. Jesus goes to his hometown and he's accompanied by his disciples and he teaches in the synagogues and people who hear him, writes Mark in chapter 6 verse 2, they are amazed by the clarity and authority of Jesus' teaching. How did he know all this? How did he get this gift for teaching? How is he able to do these miracles? Isn't this the guy who a few years ago was just a carpenter isn't that Mary's son isn't his brother James and Joseph, uh, Joseph Judas and Simon his sisters are still here aren't they and they move from being amazed to being offended says Mark in verse 3 of chapter 6 and Jesus response is a famous one one that has to a certain extent entered into the culture a prophet says Jesus is not without honour, except in his own town, among his relatives and in his own home. Jesus said, this is just what happens. He couldn't do any miracles there, except lay his hands on a few people who were ill and heal them. And Jesus was amazed at the lack of faith. Just as an aside, I, I love that understatement. He couldn't do any miracles, except lay his hands on a few people who were ill and heal them. I think, I think if, if that was my bad day at the office, I'd take that. I'm sure many of us would do. And then after that, Jesus goes around the villages and the surrounding area. He calls the 12 disciples with him and he sends them out in pairs and gives them the authority that God has given him to exercise demons, heal the sick, and gives them these instructions as they're going out proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place, shake the dust off your feet as test me against them. And then disciples go out, preach about the kingdom of God. They drive out demons and they heal the sick. So there we are. That's Mark chapter six. And 
it's here that we are seeing that very human dynamic, that very human reaction that I was talking about just now. And it's picking up the, on this theme that Mark has been alluding to over the last couple of chapters that we've been looking at over the last couple of Sundays about opposition. And this time, the opposition to Jesus's mission and ministry comes from the people who know him best, his, his family, the people who he grew up amongst, the very people that you think should be celebrating him. And again, this is a reminder that opposition, problems, difficulties in our mission and ministry are normal. There should be no surprise if our life in obedience to the call of Jesus on us is hard. And if we meet opposition and difficulty, whether it's from kind of the the storms of life that we've looked at, whether we've looked at gossip, whether it's gossip, whether it's demonic, or whether it's kind of cynicism and negativity from those who we th- we thought were for us. Jesus seems to say that opposition is just what happens. Elsewhere, we know Jesus says to his disciples, when they persecute you, don't be alarmed because really they're persecuting me. And this is, again, the sort of thing that Jesus demonstrating here. This isn't actually about any one person, this is about the gospel. And the opposition isn't really to the person, it's to the gospel. So Jesus does what God calls him to there, which is to proclaim the message of the kingdom, to be obedient, to to heal the sick, and then he moves on. It's not The response of people is not Jesus's responsibility. And so often we fall into that trap, don't we? We think that if if the friend we've been praying for to become a Christian doesn't become a Christian, it's because we failed in our witness to them or our mission and ministry to them. But that's not how it is. Our job is to be obedient and faithful, to live a life that proclaims the gospel. We can't control whether a friend responds to the gospel. We might think, why is our church not a church of 150, 200 people when we're praying for it and we're witnessing to Jesus and we're doing worship and teaching and ministry? Of course, there's always things we can do better, but it's not our fault if 150 people don't come. Yes, we can improve and change and maybe be more welcoming or, or this and that or whatever it is, but but at the end of the day, we are not responsible for the reaction of others. Think of the parable of the sower. We, the sower doesn't control the soil or what the seeds do. As with the proclamation of the gospel and the living of the gospel and church so it is in every area of our life we cannot control the reactions of others yes we can maybe um, modify what we do a bit and the way we behave around others a bit and inappropriately in terms of relationships but at the end of the day we can't control how others react to us and especially to what how we live as followers of Jesus so Jesus does what God calls him to and moves on and he does and he says the same here to the 12 disciples You've seen this, you're going to expect opposition. He sends them out in pairs because solitary ministry is by and large not a model that we read about much in the Bible at all. And he says, don't go with all the resources. Don't go with lots of money. Depend on other people. Depend on being provided for. Depend on the hospitality of others. Depend on others to give you food. Depend on others to give you money. And if you're not welcomed, says Jesus, just move on. So the disciples do this. They go with very little, materially speaking. They depend on welcome and hospitality and support from others in the places they go to. And when that support comes to an end, they move on. There is nothing shameful or wrong about saying, my time in this space, in this 
area in this bit of ministry is done. It's okay to move on because the time has come to an end. They went out, the disciples, they preached about the kingdom of God, about repentance, they exercised, exorcised demons, they heal people. They concentrate on what they're called to do. They cannot control the reaction they receive. Their job is to be obedient, to be faithful. And this is what it comes down to. As followers of Jesus, we do what we're called to do. We concentrate on our calling. I think there's a general calling on all of us as Christians, which applies to everyone who is a Christian, who is a follower of Jesus. And that's probably best summed up in the great commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength and love your neighbour as yourself. There are other ways we can express it, but that is a a general call for every single follower of Jesus. Love God, love other people. And then there are more specific callings individually on each one of us that will be shaped around our gifts and our joys and our passions and our life experiences, the wounds that we bear. All those things become part of who we are and how God shapes us and uses us and calls us and says, well, This is who you are, Dave. This is who you are, Margaret or or Tarbo or or whoever it is. This, This is who you are. You place yourself as a living sacrifice before me. Let me use all your gifts and joys and passions and wounds and use them as part of your specific, individual, unique calling. And don't you worry about how others react, because if they react negatively, if they criticize you if they make jokes at your expense it's not really about you it's about me if you're being obedient to me then it's about me not you what is your calling to love god and to love others and your specific calling from the shape of your life which can evolve over time and stages of life and what's going on What is your specific calling as an individual disciple, follower of Jesus, with all the things that are part of you and that uh, happen to you? What is your calling? That's something to think and pray about. Something to chat to others about. You can chat to me, you can chat to other people about it. What is your call? Concentrate on that. If you get pushed back, don't give up. You can't control the reactions of others. Just be obedient. Just be faithful. God wants faithfulness from us. And the same applies to us as a community of followers of Jesus at St. Peter's. What are we called to do? We have our church vision statement. At St. Peter's, we want to be a community, that uh, vision statement says, that uh, where people experience Jesus, embracing the full diversity of Mowbray and beyond. That's part of our calling. We discerned that together a few years back. Maybe we need to uh, nuance that and hone that or or change that somehow. I don't know. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. But the calling of a a group of disciples is to love God and love others. It's the general calling that is for all of us. Love God, love others. That's what we're here for as a church, to love God and love others. And there'll be specific elements of that 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 we draw out and say, this is what God is calling us to as a church to be doing particularly in this time, given what is going on in our community and the resources we have available and so on. But that, what's the calling? Trust God. Love God. Love others. Don't worry about the reaction. Don't worry about the results, apparent success or otherwise. If you get pushback or, push back or opposition, if you hit problems, then it's not about you. It's about God. Let him fight. You, we, let's concentrate on being obedient and faithful. What does it look like for us to love God and love others? Well, it's a big question and we can spend a lifetime working that out. But let's pray that we are those people and that community at St. Peter's community of people who love God 
and love others, respond to our specific callings, and to trust God for the results and the process, knowing that what he calls us to is obedience and faithfulness.